Hi everyone, this is Kessel Raptorial, and I'm doing a bit of a review of the Yugi and Kaiba starter decks uh, that came out in 2002. Uh, also, a little bit of a review of the decks and cards that they used in episode one of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Uh, this was requested by uh, JTube Animation, uh, who asked that I take a look at the episode one decks. So, in episode one of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, uh, Yugi and Kaiba had their first match. Now, this is not the actual episode one. Uh, if you're aware, there is a so-called season zero of Yu-Gi-Oh! that has all the, um, the pre-Pegasus episodes, which are kind of, uh, which are pretty episodic, uh, meaning that the conflicts are pretty much, the conflicts are introduced and resolved uh, in one episode, um, usually. There are a few that span a couple of episodes. Uh, one of my favorites is the kind of Dungeons and Dragons role-playing game that uh, Yugi and his friends play against uh, Yami Bakura before they know anything about Yami Bakura, really. Um, those are really good episodes, and the manga had even more uh, pre-Pegasus chapters. But in the, uh, the American English version, uh, episode one is uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Monsters, episode one, where Ixodia and the three blue eyes white dragons appear and the whole idea of the game is introduced. Um, even though the rules are completely random uh, at the very beginning. It doesn't take really until Battle City uh, for the game to start resembling its uh, actual gameplay. Anyway, um, so if I remember correctly, uh, I have the Yugi and Kaiba decks as stars. I, I, I'm working on, I'm not really keeping these. Uh, I'm mostly working on the customized decks that I have episodes where I build them, but uh, I do still have these to pull if I need them. Um, the way I recall the episode one duel going is Kaiba challenged Yugi to a duel after he defeated his grandfather. Um, and I could uh, watch the episode and go over the entire duel, but that would take a long time, and we don't need to be that uh, exact. So Kaiba moved first. He summoned Hitatsumi Giant, and uh, back then they... Uh, the characters, um, not the actual way you were supposed to play the game, started with 2,000 life points. So those can disappear real fast. Anyway, Kaiba summoned Hitatsumi Giant. Yugi summoned Winged Dragon, Guardian of the Fortress, and defeated Hitatsumi Giant. I believe the next move was Kaiba combining Soggy the Dark Clown with Dark Energy, which in at that time was called Negative Energy, and it increased, uh, it multiplied a Fiend-type monsters, or, or a Dark Attribute monsters, I'm not quite sure which, attack by, uh, by three, uh, which would be completely imbalanced in the real game, but... Uh, rose to 1,800 attack points, defeated the uh, Winged Dragon. Uh, let's see. I believe Yugi then threw defense position monsters. Uh, I know he defended with cards like um, Beaver Warrior and a Horn Imp. Uh, while he started to draw the uh, Exodia pieces, and these are the Exodia cards from Yugi's uh, Legendary decks. Uh, 
so he threw down defense position monsters until he drew something that could go on against Kaiba. Uh, this one happens to be Sangin. Now, he did play Sangin. Uh, I don't remember exactly when. Uh, Sangin, sadly, was not released in the original uh, starter deck Yugi. Uh, it came out as a rare in Metal Raiders, which was the second set uh, first. But um, Sangin is really good for drawing Exodia pieces, although I prefer Yugi's deck to use uh, Witch of the Black Forest, uh, which is even more useful if you also want to be able to pull some high attack monsters like Summon Skull. Uh, but in the in the episode, Yugi did play Sangin at some point. Uh, he did ultimately defeat Sagi with Gaia the Fierce Knight. Although in casual duels uh, for deck building, I prefer to replace it with Swift Gaia the Fierce Knight. Uh, and just consider that that is Gaia the Fierce Knight and can be fused with Curse of Dragon to make Gaia the Dragon Champion. I know the rulings came out and said uh, that they don't count as the same monster, um, but um, I can't imagine that these see much play in uh, high-tier tournaments and in casual play. Who cares? So... Kaiba then started to play Blue Eyes White Dragons and was on the verge of totally mopping the floor with Yugi. Uh, this is the Blue Eyes White Dragon that came out in that 2002 uh, starter deck, Kaiba. Uh, I happen to be collecting more recent Blue Eyes White Dragons. Uh, I really like the Blue Eyes White Dragons with the uh, stone tablet art. So in my custom Kaiba deck, where I have my own twist on Seto Kaiba's uh, monsters, spells, and traps, I use three of these Blue Eyes White Dragons. These ones, is exactly. Uh, I don't have three of these, so... But Kaiba started to summon his Blue Eyes White Dragons. Yugi stalled for time with Swords of Revealing Light. Uh, and then Kaiba, again, going back to the fact that the rules were uh, completely random in the first um, in the first season. Of Yu-Gi-Oh, Kaiba summoned Judge Man while his Blue Eyes White Dragons were stalled by Swords of Revealing Light. It does not work that way, but I'm assuming everyone who plays Yu-Gi-Oh is well aware of that. And uh, Yugi defeated Judge Man with the Dark Magician. And Blue Eyes White Dragons are, of course, stronger than the Dark Magician. And at the very last, uh, very last second, uh, right before he was about to lose the entire duel, Yugi, of course, using the Heart of the Cards, which I've tried, doesn't work. Assembles Exodia. For an instant win. And that's how the episode one duel plays out. Uh, now, the cards... So the cards used in their duel... Uh, let's see. Um, Exodia did come out in the very first set released, uh, the Legend of Blue-Eyes White Dragon did not come in the original Yugi deck. Um, 
but was extremely rare and extremely expensive. Um, still is, unless you uh, buy the ones the ones that come in the legendary decks, you know, you know the box sets. Um, the first special way to win a duel ever released. Uh, highly sought after cards, but were near impossible to get. Um, the rest of the cards, uh, Swords of Revealing Light, uh, interestingly did not see a release in the first Yugi deck. Um, I don't know if that's because it was considered to be too powerful to be um, a release. It, one thing that's weird is that um, the, the 2002 Yugi starter deck came with three super rare uh, holofoil cards. One was the Dark Magician, this art, uh, and the other two were spell cards. Um, card Destruction, which Yugi did use in the anime, and Soul Exchange which was a card Kaiba used in his deck, which was quite strange. Do I still have the Soul Release in here? Uh, sorry, not Soul Release, Soul Exchange. Although Kaiba did use Soul Release too. Um, so I don't know why this and not Swords of Revealing Light was the second Hollow in the original Yugi deck. I don't know why. Swords of Revealing Light is not really a game breaker. Even wasn't really way back then, so I'm not quite sure. But the decent cards used in those, uh, sorry, used in that duel were pretty much the Exodia cards, Swords of Revealing Light, and Dark Magician on Yugi's side. The original Yugi starter deck has a few other good ones. But they're mo but these are mostly um, these are mostly just so low in attack and um, were replaced by much better options really quickly. Um, strangely enough, the equip cards weren't that bad since there weren't a lot of other ways to to increase attack points that early on. Um, they're almost no good at all now, but... Um, healing cards, again... My points. Well, Trap Hole was good. Um, they had a couple of good options. Um, life Point Damage and Healing Cards and the original Yugi and Kyber decks did come with a couple. Um, in the real game, you started with 8,000 Life Points, not 2,000, uh, like the anime. Um, until Burn and Cure and Burn decks came out, these weren't all that helpful. Although, to be fair, that far back, there weren't a lot of great cards to fill deck space, so, oh well. Monster Reborn, uh, if it hadn't been so back and forth, between the banned lists, this would be one of the best, if not the best, resurrection card. And it came out from the very beginning. Uh, but that pesky banned list. Uh, Man-eating man treasure chest? Um, 1600 attack? Good for back then? Wabaku is okay. Card destruction has its uses. Um, and these aren't all of them. I've, I've taken a few out, but... but um, see, things like Maneater Bug, Trap Master... Well, Trap Master's a bit too situational, but Maneater Bug is good, and... It came with, out with... The decks came with a f few good cards, but mostly they're... Um, as soon as the new sets came out, 
you look for better options right away. Um, Dark Magician is still one of the most supported monsters in the game. So, few good options. And much can be seen, much the same can be said for the Kaiba deck. Uh, the cards he used. Um, he had not combined Sagi the Dark Clown with Crush Card Virus until almost the end of the uh, Duelist Kingdom arc. Um, that combination is good for like hand and deck disruption decks, but um, is limited otherwise in its use, especially because decks are so filled with uh, low level, low attack monsters now. Uh, it does mean giant sucks. Dark energy, it does not do. What it says in the anime, I'm assuming you all know that. Um, the the equip spell cards that increased like a certain attribute or type of monsters attacked by like two or three or four hundred uh, were were are just not powerful enough to have lasted very long. You need something a lot more versatile, like uh, United We Stand, for example. Now, um, Judge Man. Judge Man. Um, he uh, sucks even when it came out. It's just only 2200 attack, not worth the one tribute. You're much better off uh, getting a Red Eye Splat Dragon, a Dark Magician, a Kaiser Glider, uh, Saving up money for three blue eyes white dragons. Um, all still better options than Judge Man, even way back then. Lord of Dragons was awesome in the original Kaiba deck. Did come uh, did come in the very first Kaiba starter deck. And uh, combined with the flute of summoning dragon can still be devastating in dragon decks. I hope it never gets banned. Um, I used to use it a lot. Uh, yeah, my Flute of Summoning Dragon is in my custom Kaiba deck. Kaiba deck 2 came with a few good cards. Um, let's see. Here's another one Kaiba used that actually came out in the Yugi deck. So actually, you're, you would have been... If you wanted to build character decks, you'd have been well off buying both and swapping a few cards between the two. Wall of Illusion, still actually an underrated uh, fiend-type monster. Any monster that attacks it uh, is returned to the hand, regardless of whether it beats it or not. Kaiba, the, the dual robot that Kaiba fought used it, and Kaiba was said to have had it in this deck in Duelist Kingdom, although we never actually saw him use it. Uh, but anyway, uh, there we go. There's the Flute of Summoning Dragon. So the Kaiba deck came with uh, Fissure, good monster destruction card. <sighs> came with a trap hole of its own, which was good. Um, I think everyone tried to get three of those when the game first came out. Battle Ox was good. Um, really wasn't worth it to try and make uh, Rabbit Horseman unless you're building a exact replica of Kaiba's Duelist Kingdom deck, but the Battle City deck was far better. I don't know why Kaiba has had these. Uh, well, Mr. Corsman, I know, but but the fairy types, I've and and Rogue Doll, I've no idea why. Uh, some of these don't even look like they belong in a Kaiba themed deck. I I I, I, I don't know. 
Again, Yugi used Kimori Dragon, not Kaiba. I don't know why they swapped so many monsters. Uh, Ryukish Empowered and Lajin were good. I don't know why they didn't give Sword Stalker a power-up ability like it had in uh, Yugi versus Kaiba uh, right before they each fought Pegasus. Uh, even uh, even one that wasn't that wouldn't have been that strong still would have made it a better option than this. Um, it seems that when the game was very first released, they really weren't experimenting much at all with effect monsters, except for only a couple. It took them a while. Um, anyway, I like the art for D for Dragon Human. Yeah. Two prone attack. I could never make it worth the effort. Um, I think it could be if you can destroy a high level monster by sacrificing two low level ones, but it does kind of leave your field field pretty open and vulnerable. Just desserts, good. Mysterious puppeteer. Uh, as long as this card remains face up on the field, the life points. Of this card's controller increased by 500 for each additional monster summoned. I never considered using this for years. I don't know why. I, th this, uh, this option uh, completely passed by me. Uh, not bad at all for the first releases. Um. Uh, not very strong in attack or defense, so it would probably be hard to keep on the field, but still, um, better than just another normal monster. And Trap Master's good. Hane Hane is pretty good. Uh, it's another send attacking monster, or send one monster on the field uh, when it's flipped up, regardless of position, back to the hand. So... Reviewing the first Yugi vs. Kaiba duel from episode 1, and reviewing the very first Yugi and Kaiba decks that came out, my final conclusion is basically, yeah, uh, mind them for the few good options. Because uh, there are a few. And with the rest of the cards, uh, look for better options, whether you want to put, whether you want to make them into your own decks or put your own spin on the Yugi and Kaiba theme. Um, I'd say easily 80% of the cards in both decks uh, can be replaced with better options. But there are some gems.